So today, today I want to take just a few moments and, and speak to you from the subject, repent and believe. Repent and believe. Our text is Mark chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was in the wild and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, our Father, thank you for the feast for which you have prepared before us. We pray, Father, that you would guide us as we reach and we grab to feast from your word. Help us to digest it so that it becomes one with us and we become one with your word. Satisfy the longing of our souls and the desires of our hearts. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. John the Baptist preached a message that was consistent. That message was repent for the remission of your sins. He was charged, he was zealous in his efforts to make sure that the message of repentance was heard and received by all he came in contact. John was a very unpleasant sight to see. He was not groomed. His garments were um, not too much to be desired. And when you are receiving a message from someone, you tend to want to believe that the way the person presents themselves will, will bring legitimacy to the message they give. So here this man out in the wilderness, out in just living life, eating from the land, presenting a message to people to repent. He was paving the way for the one that will come whose shoes he was not worthy to unloose. There are many that did in fact heed the, the call and they committed themselves to repenting and being baptized in the River Jordan. But there are also those who looked at John and probably had second thoughts of listening to what they may have considered to be a crazy man. I mean, let's think about it. He didn't shave. He didn't cut his hair. The garments he wore were, in, in essence, he was homeless. He lived as if he had no means. 
trying to convey a message of repentance for the remission of sins to a body of people that he didn't even live among. While everybody else lived in the town or the village, he lived out on the outskirts among the wild beasts. So this very person who chose to live that kind of life wants to come and tell all of us fine dressed folk, repent for the remission of your sins. John really did not care about what people thought. He preached the message. He fulfilled or he pursued what he believed to be the call of God on his life. And so, while one day being out at the River Jordan, doing what he's been doing consistently for however long he's been doing it, here comes the one that he, been, that he spoke about, whose shoes he's not worthy to unloose. This one gets baptized in the River Jordan, and all heaven broke loose. Ah, I thought I was going to say something else. And so, in that moment, the Bible shares with us that the heavens opened up. A lot, the sun began to shine directly on the spot where they were. Dove descends from heaven. The Spirit of God descends from heaven in the form of a dove. And a voice opens up and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, we all look for a crescendo in life. Whether it be in our career or even in our purpose. We all look forward to that one day that really just sums it all up. This was that day for John. Jesus gets baptized, and straightway he goes into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus returns, and as Jesus is returning back to Galilee, John the Baptist is imprisoned. John's message was repent for the remission of sin. Jesus says, time has been fulfilled. And his message is repent and believe the gospel. So they both have a message of repent. They both have a message that speaks to the necessity of all creation to get right with God. Because after all, in order for us to be saved, we must admit that we are sinners in need of a savior. We must admit that at some point we were in fact an enemy of God. And we're made righteous by the blood of Jesus. We're made righteous by as we surrender our heart and we confess our sins before the Lord. We are, in fact, getting right with God. But this matter of repentance does not rest solely on the day that we surrender our life to Christ. It is, in fact, a necessity by which we are to perform every day. Because every day we sin and fall short of the glory of God. Now again, I know some of us might be a little bit more perfect than others. It happens. But even the perfect sin. So Jesus continues the message of repentance. He continues the message of reconciling with God. Because that's what repentance really is. It's reconciliation. It's being reconciled back to God and our relationship being made whole. 
But without the blood of Jesus, it was nearly impossible for that to happen. Now that was the background. This is where I want to be. So the, the message today is repent and believe. We live in an era of time where there are deliberate acts of people determined to shift the message of God's word. They are contorting the scriptures in order to justify their agenda and their life of sin. They have decided the understanding of the scriptures and, and how it has been presented over the last 2,000 plus years is wrong. And they have the right answer that fits perfectly into their agenda. It doesn't matter how we attempt to contort the word. God's word is truth. And no matter what we do in an attempt to fix it to fit our agenda, it doesn't change the fact that God's word doesn't lie. God stands on his word and every child of God, every believer, every Christian ought to be doing the same thing. We cannot selectively believe the word. We cannot selectively choose what we want to accept and what we don't want to accept in the word. It's either accept all scripture or accept none. There isn't an in between. How many times have you addressed your children and gave them a directive and they come back with something far different and you give the same directive again and they come back with something even more different and yet you give the same directive again as if your word it was going to change until they finally get the message. God's word doesn't change. It stands resolute. So Jesus presents his message of repentance and believe the gospel. Why? Why did Jesus take a moment out of his time, a moment of breath to say for us, repent and believe the gospel? I don't know the answer to that, but I can kind of play with it a little bit. I believe he knew that the time would come where people would be swayed by convincing speech by other people. I believe that he knew a day was going to come where someone was going to twist the word of God in order to meet their agenda in hopes to get others to follow suit. I believe that he said these words so that this day as we face right now that we would have something to hold and to anchor on to to recognize that God's truth is reverent. It's resolute. It does not change. The Bible warns us that there a time will come where uh, many would be swayed by any wind of doctrine that flows. But ultimately, he reminds us to only believe the gospel. 
Doesn't matter how fancy the preacher can speak. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how intentionally the teacher can teach. What matters? What does the gospel say? What does the Bible say? This is a time and a moment where our faith is under a severe attack. Our belief in what we believe is under attack. We must remain resolute as we seek the Lord, as we examine our faith, believe God's word above all else, trust in his word. There is no ambiguity in his word. It's clear. It's concise. And it's purposeful. I'm getting ready to close, but I want to share this with you. The Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. Do you believe it? Who said no? You said no? You don't believe it? Uh-huh. I thought somebody said no. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, what? You don't believe that? <laughs> okay, we got to talk after service. The scripture says that by his stripes we are healed. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You got to be better than this, family. Do you believe it? That's a statement of belief right there. There we go. All right. Then if you believe it, then you know that no matter what sickness we face, by God's word, we're going to, we are healed. Our faith cannot waver because of the circumstance we're in. The Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think or ask according to the power that worketh within. Do you believe it? Here we go. Do you believe it? Amen. The Bible says, for I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Do you believe it? Amen. The Bible says, I am more than a conqueror. Do you believe it? Amen. The Bible says that you are an overcomer. Do you believe it? Amen. The Bible says that you are a child of the most high God. Do you believe it? Amen. Then act like it. <laughs> believe the word of God. It does not fail. It doesn't. It's not a gimmick. It's not a fad. It's faith. If God said it, then it's already done. God bless you.